I decided to try some new things out and as per the title let's have a quick look at the video and photo quality between an amazing hybrid mirrorless camera from Sony and one of the best smartphones released this year, the Samsung S23 Ultra. Thanks to a longtime friend of the channel, I borrowed from him this A7 IV alongside the Sony GF424-105 OSS glass, so Angelo thank you again. Also to mention that I'm not a professional photographer, I'm about getting the desired results for my needs with whatever gear I can. So if you spot a mistake or I miss something, please feel free to help me down in the comments. With this out of the way, let's begin. If you clicked on this video, you already know by now the specs for both items, so I know we are on the same page. Since the S23 Ultra has so many lenses and ways to shoot, I want to keep things as simple as possible when comparing. This is because on smartphones they use a lot of post-processing, or in RAW mode when, if desired, they can have an HDR look, and on and on. Thus I will mark everything accordingly. Let's see if you can guess which is which. These are straight from the cameras, with everything on auto mode. Zooming in at 100%, you can clearly see that the Sony picture on the left side is sharper overall. This is a RAW 33 megapixel uncompressed file. Meanwhile, the phone one is a 50 megapixel JPEG. When we switch to a RAW 50 megapixel from Pro mode, where post processing is minimal, this looks a bit sharper than the JPEG one. Finally on 200 megapixels on the S23 Ultra, where we use the full sensor and because it captures so much information, the picture looks really good even zoomed in. Also to mention that all of these were taken handheld. So at 200 megapixels from my end and my screen, I think it's getting harder for me to tell them apart anymore, which is an impressive feat for the S23 Ultra. Now let's switch to some video. Both were taken at 4K resolution in H.265 codec at 60fps, again in auto mode. From my testing, the S23 Ultra has an aggressive stabilizing as you kinda feel it, almost like a magnetic field guiding you. It's very interesting but very weird at the same time. And this is without the special extra stabilization option that the phone has up its sleeve. Now for the hard ones in low light. This is what I was talking about when the phone does it a bit too much of its post processing with the HDR even with a 50 megapixel JPEG. Then I took another one in RAW 12 megapixels through the Expert RAW app and this looks a bit better but still here it overdid the greens. As for the last test, the night videos. Here in auto mode the phone tried too much to compensate and thus there is too much noise. While in pro mode I managed to get a pretty decent result with even better performance in the rolling shutter department where it's greatly amplified on the Sony. So yeah, the conclusion is quite subjective because the fact alone that now we are comparing smartphones to professional mirrorless cameras is an achievement on its own, of course within common sense. I think the S23 Ultra is incredibly versatile and capable for what it is, and personally for what I record and shoot it's more than enough for me. Do I want something like the Sony A7? Hell yeah, but can I afford one? Hell no.